um, how to sell direct to your readers using Shopify. First, who am I? My name is Pierre Alex Gentil. Um, I've been a full-time author for nine years, and um, I'm a USA Today bestseller, Amazon bestseller, Barnes & Noble bestseller. I like to say that so you know, okay, I've achieved quite, you know, some things as an author. Um, I write poetry and self-help, um, which is interesting because most of the time you hear that poetry does not sell, and I happen to be, me and a student, a few students happen to be poets who do sell. Um, direct sales. Um, direct sales happen to be something that is now gaining traction, which I love, and I've been doing this for the last four years. Um, and I, I have a history with it before, since I started as an author, but when I talk about direct sales, we're talking about as it is now with the technology and every way authors are looking at it. Um, I've done over $8 million in gross sales. Um, some come from Amazon, which is where I have $6 million came through Shopify. Um, that is not only my revenue. We have students and people we've helped that have generated more. I usually don't try to throw that in because I like going based on my experience. Um, I've also built about 15 Shopify stores. So since I started this in the last four years, I've worked with different people before I started educating. And um, we've built different stores. We've helped people optimize stores. So we know 15 that we've built. Um, but in terms of helping other opti others optimize it, um, I, I can't even count. Now, with every presentation that I do, I like to use the what, who, where, what, and why. It makes it easier. It makes it simpler. So who? I know direct sale, again, is the wave right now. And I will, this is one of the things that I'll be talking a bit more in my presentation around 2.30. But it's good to start here talking about it. When you're thinking about direct sale in Shopify, you have, the, you have like a mindset, um, mindset switch. Because you're coming from being an author who simply sell books, so now you own a bookstore and you're controlling a book business. So it is for people who are transitioning from selling books to owning a thriving book business that will have longevity. The pitch point for a lot of direct sales is that now you can control your data, now you have full control, Amazon can't ban you, et cetera. But I want people to understand it's not just simply just throwing your book on a website and it's the same thing. No, it's, it's an entirely different thing. And that's why you know, people like me and others who are teaching about it exist. So what? Well, Shopify is an e-commerce platform that gives authors the ability to sell their book as merchandise like everybody else. Why I say as merchandise, when we're looking at direct sales, it's not really new. It's e-commerce except for authors. E-commerce, you shop online, you purchase stuff you know, from different sites that you may not recognize are hosted on Shopify, but e-commerce has always, not always, but existed long before we're talking about direct sales. But it is an ideal route for authors selling direct. Now again, because I feel like there's a need to talk about direct sales, um, I'm going to talk a little, spend a good five to 10 minutes talking about it before I dive right into Shopify. Now, before I do that, I want you to understand my journey so you can see kind of like the, kind of how all of this came about. So in the beginning, when I launched as, a, as an author in 2014, around 2013, I, was, I started selling online. So I have, meaning I had some kind of experience with e-commerce way before. So I had, what you're looking at here is a brand I created, which is Gentleman Hood. I was blogging on um, a website and I started selling t-shirts because people were asking for more. It was like, we love the blog, we love the idea, there's more. The photo on the bottom is when I realized that I need to stop doing direct sell because that receipt there runs about I could say at least 25 feet. It was the longest receipt I had. I showed up at the post office, and I, they had to get me in there like early Saturday morning with a mean face and say, why are you doing this to us? 
Uh, so it was, we were selling a lot of the t-shirts. I started selling books, which is how I launched my first book. It was on an e-commerce website. And overall, you know, based on that experience, I decided to head over to CreateSpace, which is Kindle pub Direct Publishing now. And I started my process. And throughout the, from 2017 to 2018, really, no, from 2015, I'm sorry, to 2018, all I did was simply sell on Amazon um, while actively on the side selling on my shop. It was anyone who wanted to go direct to my shop and buy something, that was how I did it. Um, but after getting a return from Amazon, and this is a picture of my books on Amazon here, uh, I had a deal that fell through and we had 15,000 books returned and I needed to find out how can I take control of my business. And during that time, right at the top here, you could see I was, uh, this is me at Barnes & Noble, I was torn and I realized I had no control of anything because I had one point, I had about a million followers on Facebook and half a million on Instagram, but I could not get any of my, um, anyone to show up to my signings. And I'm like, wait, I'm popular, but everything is capped. So this is why I will launch into the journey of um, going to have, having my own bookstore where I got those books. And if you're in the 20 books group, you'll see the journey back to 2019. I took my books, put them in a, um, in a storage unit, and I started taking control of my own business. And by 2020, we, op we got into a warehouse with my family here. And since then, this has been what we've done as a primary source. So direct sales. Let's talk about what direct sale is not. Direct sales, especially as someone who has like a nine year journey experience with this, I have to tell you it's not an end all be all of the book industry. It's, it's something that I think it needs to be said because a lot of people are running to it, especially with Amazon banning people, just different, just so many more reasons that this is a topic. And I want, part of me teaching this is making sure I talk to people as honest as possible and say, it is such a great option and great alternative. There's so many good to it. And you being able to build a book business that is thriving, um, this opens a door. However, it's not the only thing. And it's not the end all be all because I have people who come to me and like, well, I'm doing well in KU, I'm doing this and you know, we're making great money, but I just wanna drop everything and go to the direct. I'm like, okay, good idea, but slow down. <laughs> Let's transition because it's now you're coming from I sell books and now I own a business and it takes a little bit more. So if I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I get this message across to you. One, and the other thing, direct sale is not easy. It takes commitment, it takes proper mindset, it takes patience. You will see that as you set up your Shopify because you will run into many things, you'll get frustrated, you pull your hair out and you'll call people. You fail and fail and succeed and succeed. Um, but it takes having the proper mindset, understanding you're building a business and this is long term, so it's not going to happen overnight. It takes the proper mindset, business mindset, and patience. And it's not the fastest or slowest route, but the most manageable. And what I mean by manageable, this is where your data comes in. because. When we look at it, I have Morgan Hills in the front. She was the first person that, Morgan, wait. <laughs> Morgan is the first author that I was like, I'm gonna take, I, I wanna work with you. I wanna implement this and help you grow it. And Morgan, um, in about like a year and a half, she became a seven figure author. So she, ex <laughs> but I say that to say that's fast. And I could keep saying this is, can, can happen, but it's also, a slow route for many because for Morgan, we had to spend a good six months getting down in the infrastructure to having it where you can scale it. Once you have everything well, this is really scalable. Um, you have almost no limitation. You possibly, you're gonna have cash flow and different things, but you have to understand it's not going to be fast for everyone and most people are going to see the slow side of things. But even when it's slow for you, just know when it clicks is going to be successful. And also, it's not about just product bundling and liquidation. I do see one of the things I want to, in my journey, I've done a lot of stuff and tested a lot of stuff. I see people, some are running to it um, with the mindset that the only, I'm just gonna succeed if I throw a bunch of products together and give good deals in book liquidation, I'm sorry, give like extremely great discounts and so forth. 
Now, I would say that is a technique. It is a technique that can work for some. Um, it is, it's, there's many things that will work for different authors. But if you're running and you're not prepared and you shut up your shop just exactly just to do this, I hate to say that you're going to run into reality and that direct sell. Again, no business is thriving on just giving a bunch of discounts. They will give discounts in certain seasons and have sales, but they're not running the business just on that. So, so I wanted to say that, get that out of the way, the fun talk, but direct sale is one of the best ways to make sure that your business is not on sand, but it's not a lifeboat for every struggle in business. That last line is very important to me because I see also people who haven't had their journey as an author working or I understand what it's going to be to be a full-time author or to take this serious, and they're thinking like, okay, this is gonna save me. And I have to also tell people like, look, we have to understand, you know, first we gotta look at your books, look at your book cover, the quality. Um, first, do you, you know, the market that you're marketing it to. And we have to look at real things before we dive into it. So, so now enough of the boring stuff. <laughs> Um, you came here to look about, talk about Shopify, and I'm not here trying to like, mess up your dreams, but I want to be as real as possible with you. So why Shopify? One, because Shopify is user-friendly. Shopify, I've been on SamCart, ThriveCart, WordPress, and I don't know what other stores, ClickFunnels, Kajabi. I've been on a lot of platforms because I've been around this for a while, and I picked Shopify because it was user-friendly. It was the first shop that I did not have to call my developer and said, I need to change this or I need to change that. I've sold a lot on, e on WooCommerce, um, and also I had Wix when it was like beat up. <laughs> now Wix has really changed. But Shopify is very user-friendly once you understand what it is. Shopify is simply, once you get the base that what it does is just a store on, you know, in the back end, then after that you understand it's like now you're dressing it up. It's like a person who just wear different disguise because that's where you get into designing your theme, how it looks, but everything is the same on the back end. Um, so, and I'll say exactly why I mentioned that, but I'm jumping ahead. The other thing is constantly evolving. Shopify, where it was at four years ago, is, is definitely different. Shopify is one of those platforms that's keeping up with everything that is going, just as Facebook and TikTok. It is the ideal. I'm, I would hate to tell you to go and to, to use any other platform simply because they don't keep up as much as Shopify does. Um, even from the themes, to upgrading them, to, to, to just integrating with Facebook, um, the data, and, and, shop, and if you'll notice that they're always creating new things. They know authors need email marketing. They create an email marketing platform. They know authors probably, or brands will have influencers, people, you know, to market with that way. They implemented that. TikTok came out, the shop's in there. And if you're getting into this, you'll notice that you could also sell on a Facebook, Instagram, and those platforms. They're all also on the back end of Shopify because a lot of it, it feeds right into it. And I've been selling on Facebook and Instagram shop for like two years strong now, and I could tell you that. Um, it provides customer data. It was also one of the first platforms I could see a lot of what's going on a bit easier because with Shopify, you get to see the customer journey, which is why we're doing this. You get to see who comes to your website, what they've done, what is trending, what is happening, where they left, and you have full control where you can become almost your, your own Amazon. And it is approving Facebook marketing partners. I want to say that because it's one of the easiest um, platforms to integrate with Facebook. And the reason, is easy, the reason it's worth mentioning that because your whole direct sale journey, once you have your shop and your email list, the most important part is the marketing, is how you get people to your store and Shopify make it so easy and seamless. Um, and that is worth mentioning. Now, a little bit more facts about Shopify. It's used by over four million, um, um, actually it was 6.5 million businesses, but only 4.6 are active. And there's a bunch of stats. I'm gonna go just throw a few things. There's having custom themes just for you. And um, the fact that now they have a Shopify markets, you could sell anywhere. Um, not just, before we had some barriers before markets. Um, and pretty much Shopify, part of me showing you the stats is understanding that Shopify is one of the leading platforms when it comes to selling in the e-commerce space. So I don't want you to look at it as like, this is just an alternative. It's one of the best alternatives when it comes to that. So how? 
you utilize Shopify by building a Shopify store with the focus of becoming your own Amazon. And that's the idea here, is that we want to look at how Amazon sell our books and what is the strength in Amazon and how can we implement it in our own business. Well, one, I used this last year for my presentation, is one, you bec it becomes a place where a reader buy books. That's what you ultimately bring in, is that you want to build somewhere where your readers can buy your book and they feel like they're supporting you, but also so you're getting all the benefits of Amazon. Because when someone purchases your book on Amazon, they're Amazon customers, not yours. So whatever the, in the data, everything else goes to Amazon and you want to be in the position if you want to build a book business long term to have that. Then you get a chance to build a huge, um, little huge database of those buyers for the purpose of selling more to them. Um, one of the things I'm going to mention later on in the presentation or even um, the presentation, uh, the later presentation around 2.30 is that it's not just having a transaction. Amazon don't just have transaction with people. There's, my wife buys stuff from Amazon every other day. It's not just one transaction. It's the start of a relationship, and then for her, it's like an addiction um, at this point. But um, you have to look at you're building the store as something to build a relationship with your readers and something that will help you grow long term where now you can become your own Amazon, which is an idea that I pitch. You could use funnels to attract, convert, and retarget buyer. Again, buyers. Um, again, you start to have full control of your book business in ways that most people don't understand. It's like you can go to someone's shop, they know you browse and look at a certain product. In some places we call that spying, but in marketing we call that good marketing. Then you could also see what they're doing in the cart, what everything that someone does and when it comes to being interested and in wanting to buy your book, you can track that. And that is important to have a successful business online because if you're only going by transaction, that's not going to help you. And it could help you expand on selling more and depend solely on growth propelled by sell. And that, that is a key thing to say because when you get to Shopify, it's no longer about all the pretty stuff and all the cool stuff. It's how can you build a business and businesses run on sales. And sales is all about you finding a way to sell your book. But a quick outline here again that I use about a framework where I said ADS is how you become your own automated direct sale is showing you what is a funnel look like when you start using Shopify and what is you know, the ideal way. So both here at the top we have paid traffic or organic traffic. It's just getting people into Shopify. And you have people who will browse. Soon they start to look at your shop, you're able to retarget them. Um, but also that data is also is being used. You could retarget them whether by it's paid traffic or just you simply retarget them with like email where you have a little bit more control. But that paid traffic doesn't have to be, that paid traffic um, also feed Facebook in terms of also understanding what is going on. So this is some, some of the things we're talking about again in the next session. But when, it's, when you're looking at Shopify, everything that happens at that store is an entryway. So you want to spend time building it because now it's someone stepping foot inside your business and now this is where the journey starts. It's not where the journey ends. The transaction is the first step to, to everything. But as you're thinking about, uh, you know, once you, once you leave here and if you haven't had a Shopify or you're thinking about it, go on to Amazon and buy, well, you're probably going to buy stuff, but see how Amazon does operate and picture you having a business where you have that ultimate control. And of course, you probably don't want to depend on Amazon since they're banning, they're handing out banning meals from ticket, meal tickets everywhere. So, um, but that is the power of Shopify. And then when it comes to Shopify, the last thing that I think, not the last thing, but one of the key components you're going to have to look at is do you want to use a product page or landing page, which is the, the main thing that they're talking about when it comes to, to selling here. So you who have a Shopify or starting a Shopify, you're only going to have those two options. And I, I decided I wanted to highlight, on, uh, highlight it a little bit more. So Shopify, the purpose of it is not to build a pretty website. It's not to, to have a huge online store. It's for you to sell books, and those are the two ways you're going to have it. One is a product page. What is a product page? A product page is where someone just show up. It's like your Amazon page for the book. They simply go and make a purchase. 
you're supposed to spend most of your time editing or optimizing fixing the product page. And that is where your business will live. And, and in the product page, you get a chance to control a lot, and this is where the user-friendly side of Shopify happen, is that you get to add reviews, you get to add different things about you know, calculated shipping time, you get to fix it in a way the user will have an, a shopping experience similar to Amazon, but also this is going to give you control of your business. Now, in direct sales, it's, it's, it, a lot of the conversation is either or. The one thing I've realized over the, the, the year, the last four years, is that I've always used both because I never want to miss out on any um, segment of audience because not everyone buy from product pages, but not everyone buy from landing pages. So the product pages are essentially made for shopping. These are the type of people that are used to Amazon they're coming to buy your books, but they're looking at a shopping experience because they don't want any information. They're what in marketing we call impulse buyers. And that's why your product page is going to be vital in the amount of time you spend on them. Then the other thing is your is landing pages. Landing pages are usually for I, the readers that like to be knowledgeable when they make their decision, or it takes some convincing. And when it comes to a landing page, um, this is something as well you can build on Shopify. And just to pause real quick to take a sip of water and I'll tell you that the other part about Shopify being user friendly is that for everything there's an app for it. It's like an iPhone. Like for everything there's an app. And why it's one of the ideal platforms for you to use is that no matter what you're going to need, even if you only want to use landing pages, you could build it on the Shopify product page or any other thing, any anything you could think of you're going to need, you can use it there. This is ideal because as you're building your direct um, sales funnel, your data is the most important thing. And it's good if you're training Facebook to come to one place to do most of the things, because Facebook now, being that it's very AI-driven and has been, um, for the last four years I've used what a lot of people are talking broad targeting, that's where we made most of our money, we allow Facebook to do it, which is conversation later, but um, what you want is a hub where you do everything at once so Facebook gets to see everything you're doing, which allows Facebook to find better customers. So I've had where I gave a free book. Um, you know, I've used that funnel, and I built it on the Shopify because I wanted people to come there, pop up, and get the free book. I no longer use that system, but then it was the same thing whenever it was bundles. I used Shopify. Landing page, Shopify. What I'm essentially saying is encourage you to everything you're doing, especially with there's so many different ways to sell in direct, um, and the whole direct concept, you want to make sure you have a place where the data is being um, pretty much stored and you're able to utilize that um, going forward to your benefit. So what are some of the best recommendations before we jump into the fun part of Q&A? One, simplicity wins. I need a lot of people building their shop to understand this. This is someone who I've spent thousands of dollars on testing Shopify. I was on Shopify Plus right once where I was paying $2,000 a month just because I wanted to see everything Shopify offered. And I will tell you, simplicity one. The simplest website I've had made us $4 million, and the rest was just like, we just keep testing different things, and it just got more expensive. So don't think about you going to make a shop where you have to, you know, it's all about you. Think about you as a shopper where everything gets in your way, you leave, you get mad and leave. So simplicity win. And the next thing is, which is what I dove into, customer experience is better than a sexy store. I see people get into the colors, they get into everything, and I'm like, it's good if it makes you feel good. But the customer's experience mattered the most because now we're going into having a book business and that's the most important thing. Um, and the next part is optimization is the key to success. As you're building your Shopify store, you will find, you will learn things about your ideal reader that you really would not have known before. And as you're building your shop, I want you to keep in mind, like, you have to constantly improve it. Now, it's, you're not gonna be forever committed to it. There's changes I haven't done in years. But part of it is that you need to make sure you're, you're seeing how everyone is um, reacting on your website 
and building your website according to what your audience need. Because you don't want to build something and then they're like, it's not converting. So you want to make decision based on that. And then the last thing that I thought as a, uh, just something that popped off my head is your site speed plays a, an important role. So why I mentioned site, P, site speed is we don't realize how Amazon works. First of all, Amazon is simple. That's why you know, some people don't believe you could sell books by just having a naked store. And I'm like, Amazon has been doing it forever. Like, this is what we're trying to, 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 to do, become our own Amazon. So they will buy on product page. It just takes you understanding your audience. Because it's not just them showing up and there's a multiple genres and they make a decision. Now you're showing up as your store, your genre, you have to see it as a, a bookstore owner, per se, and find ways to, to um, pretty much build out a customer flow. I always talk about mapping your customer journey um, to make it happen. But if you, let me ask this question. How many people here already started building their Shopify store or had a Shopify store? OK, good. So these are the people that I will put a huge emphasis on those things that I'm talking about, is that you want to keep it simple, or you'll be in there all day. You want to think about the customer journey. You want to um, even look at Amazon, look at different websites. And, and um, you know, if someone asks me, I have theme recommendations. I have all kind of things that I, um, I can offer. But I will tell you, it's, it's it, keep it as simple as possible. Now I had these last slides that were from last year's presentation that I think it's worth saying because I actually had last year's presentation ready, but then I realized that I didn't need to tell people about direct sales. I needed to tell them you know, more on the internal side of direct sales because, so literally I had to scratch my whole presentation last night and, and <laughs> because there was a bunch of uh, direct sales presentations already. But anyway, Shopify gives you opportunity in every single transaction where now you could tell upsell. You, it's not you only selling your book. Now you could sell multiple books. You could sell series. You could get people to commit to more. You get a chance to officially use your full audience. Because how many of us know someone who purchased a book? And first of all, you probably did not know until the person said something. Um, and second is you don't know how to sell them the others unless you message them and say, hey, can, I'd love to sell it to you. But now with Shopify, you have apps where when people take action, you can offer them more. You could introduce them to more and so forth. And you have opportunity for cross sales, which is something I talk about where when you're building your business in direct sale, you have to think about it about like McDonald's. Um, and, and I use this in a book that we'll have that I, I, I recommend most people read about direct sale. And um, the way McDonald's work, you, could, you, go, you show up, you get a burger. But then you're not leaving with just a burger. Then you have your fries, which is um, you know, considered an upsell, your fries and a drink. Um, then you have cross-sell, which is milkshake, maybe a latte since it's this morning, something. But the business have a way for them to be more profitable um, it's not just selling one product. And I, I want you to think about when you're building your shop, you have to build it with the mindset that I am going to sell more and I have to have a journey and think like a business um, rather than just setting something for people to visit. Um, one of the things that I tell people a lot is that if you want another store, don't go to Shopify. It's, there's cheaper ways. Stick to a WordPress website whatsoever. But if you want to have a store or a hub for your, your readers, Consider Shopify because um, not only can you be a shop, but you could even do your blogging in there. You could do all your website stuff. So a lot of it is it gives you a lot of ability to scale. And just as I'm looking at time, which was the last time is when, which is we go to what, why, who, why, when is a good time to start with your Shopify? Despite all the warnings I gave you about direct sale, this is your best time to start with Shopify. <laughs> Um, as you've seen, the e-commerce is changing. Just last year, the last year alone, I think Shopify added over 2 million stores. It is becoming a trend and people are buying on there. One of the questions that I'm asked often is that, how do I train my readers to buy on Shopify? You don't have to train your readers to buy on Shopify. They've been buying on Shopify way before. There's a lot of stores that are hosted in there. And I believe Tesla, I know Home Depot is also on there, Fashion Over. There are a lot of places, a lot of stores already using Shopify. You're just purchasing it, not realizing it. And people are used to e-commerce. 
Now, I think the data side is going to, okay, we're looking at time. I think the data side is where author are new, authors are new, because in my, in my uh, scaling um, session, I'm going to talk about how when you go broad, a little bit about when you go broad with ads, um, authors are seeing some, it's one of the most successful ways to go, but they're also not, a lot of them are seeing as, many, as much success. And the idea is, Facebook has a pixel on everyone's website. But before we started having this conversation, how many authors had Shopify stores? So they're behind on, the, the, the best way to say it, they're behind on data when it comes to stocking authors' website. And the more you go into a website like, you know, using platforms like Shopify, the better it is because you become part of that e-commerce bubble. And if we all are doing it, the better it gets. That's why I'm so happy so many people are ta talking about direct sales because I'm like, yes, I believe authors deserve to be paid more. I believe authors deserve to, to have control of their business. I believe authors should, ha should think of it as a business and have full-time career. And that's why I'm like, anyone who's teaching it, I'm, I'm applauding you. So I say all that to say, time for the Q&A. And if you need any help, um, what I've been doing over the last four years is sharing my journey, but also helping others um, launch their store, um, launch their business. And as I mentioned, Morgan. Morgan came to me um, about almost two years ago, and just to see how her business has scaled. And I have other authors here that we've helped. Um, if you need help, I do have a Shopify course. I have other courses. Um, you could scan this uh, QR code, but one of the things I put a huge emphasis on, sorry, whoever was just taking the picture. I got you. I'll bring it back. <laughs> I saw that. Um, one of the things that I, I highly recommend is that I have this book where I created, where I tell you everything about the journey, what it all means. So when you're creating, creating your Shopify, you're not just going in there and creating a store, but you're understanding what you're building and how to have the proper mindset and build long term. So we're exactly at 10 minutes, and I'm going to put the other thing back and take a bunch of questions. And before the questions, too, I want to say I'm going to be real close to this because my hearing is not as great, and my um, ex-assistant <laughs> likes to tell me that I need to hear better. So, yes, questions. Hey, thanks for that. That was uh, really, um, really fantastic. Um, you touched on it a little bit at the end. Do you think by having a Shopify, it's one of the things I've obviously already got a website up and running, and do you think that you can transition just a not a band, but get rid of the website and have it all in one's place? Because I don't really want to yes. manage multiple things. Absolutely, because one of the, uh, part of me telling you you want to hoard your data, ultimately what you're doing is you want every platform, whether it's TikTok, Pinterest, you want all of them to know what your customer is doing at one place. If your customers are looking for you and you will send them to, to your WordPress, and then, then when they're buying, you go to your store, then now that person is not trackable anymore. The idea is the more you have happening on your website, the more point you will have with marketing and the better it is. Like, I launch ads and don't touch anything. Sometimes I don't even touch an age. Cool. So, yes. Thank you. Yes. Consolidate. That was my question. Perfect. <laughs> I have a different question. Uh, so I'm looking into selling audiobooks through direct. Uh, once, I, once I set up my own store, I want to sell audiobooks on it. I don't know how to distribute them because I know most people, if they want to buy audiobooks online, they want to use Audible because it's an app. Uh, and I don't know, how do you get people to buy an audiobook that they're going to have to sideload or do something else with? Book funnel. So I recommend Book Funnel um, to fiction authors. Um, I'm a lot in the nonfiction world. I just download apps and just give it to them right there. So it's just like for eBooks, any digital, you can use Book Funnel. I know they have audio and eBooks. Um, it's just a matter of integrating it with it. When, when someone make a purchase, it takes them there, and Book Funnel has a great customer service team. Now, if you're someone like me who doesn't necessarily care too much about security, I've sold a lot of books and seen a lot of boot, bootleg version of my books. So I got to a point where it's just like, I can't stop you from stealing it anyway. So what I use is apps on Shopify, like digital download and something named Skypilot. And soon someone make a purchase, it just hand them, give them an account on my Shopify um, store and it send them a download link and they take it there. But the safer part is book funnel, safe or not safe, whichever one. <laughs> If they pirate it, they pirate it. Thank you. No problem. Hey, uh, so what advice would you give to someone who wanted to use, say, the Shopify plugin for their WordPress site? They're interested, I know you said that it's kind of better to do Shopify from the get-go. 
But if they were interested in maintaining their WordPress site and just using the plugin instead of WooCommerce or something like that, do you have any advice or insights you could share? Well, you already know my first advice <laughs> when I just switch over. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually don't have anything because I think um, Shopify, again, you could take the buy button and all of those things. If it's a route for you, I think you can do it. Um, one of the things I would tell people if they're using both and you plan on doing marketing, try to have the pixel on both websites, mm -hmm. which I'm always going to be more about that. I started teaching this because I wanted to teach marketing. Right. Um, but that would be the best case is m moving as much as possible over. I don't know if that helps. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, left, I have a bad relationship with WordPress, so I'm like, ah, it's crazy ex-girlfriend, for sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Pierre, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good, good, good. Um, actually, I don't have a question. I just have a testimonial. Um, Pierre has really helped my business. Uh, he got me thinking differently as opposed to just doing Amazon ads, actually having a book business. So I did this accelerator. It's been great. So anybody who's interested in hooking up with Pierre, I definitely, definitely encourage you. Okay. Um, this is an unpaid ad, by the way. So <laughs> I promise you I did not pay him. He did, he did not pay me. No, this guy, this guy worked with me. Like, he really worked with me in terms of getting my Shopify site up, in terms of getting my Facebook ads right, and it's really helped me out tremendously. It's just a matter of just um, implementing what he teaches you because he does a really good job. So awesome. I just want to... Um, you know, give Pierre's credit because he does a great, great work. I really appreciate everything you've done. So Thank you, Paco. Now, real quick, the reason Paco says that is because I'm in his accelerator, and I'm like, you're not leaving here until we get the shop done and we get everything done. I don't care because our accelerator is for three months. I held him hostage for six months until he gets it done. <laughs> like, no, my job is to make sure you succeed at this or at least have it done. So, yeah. Thanks, Paco. Okay, next. Hi. Um, yeah. So you mentioned earlier in your journey, it seemed like volume was a concern. You're taking too much for the post office. Um, at what point do you recommend, I assume you do like print on demand, if you have merch, if you have books, do you recommend going print on demand right away? Oh yeah, I like Book Vault. So when I started, I did not have this, none of this technology really existed. Lulu was still around, but I'm not, I wasn't sure if they were doing it. I think I installed it and there was uh, Vervanti. And I shopped around, and the reason I have a warehouse and I was doing it that way is because I didn't, the, the technology wasn't there. But now you guys are coming in, and that's the beautiful part about it is that there's so much more ready for authors. Um, it, when it comes to whether you use POD or not, I think it's all based on where you're at in your business. Morgan, can I use you as an example? So we use Morgan because Morgan used our warehouse. So I have a warehouse, and, um, and our vendor table, we had... Um, the done for you and the, the cards about it, it's simply because some authors, as they're doing a lot of volume, and Morgan sells a lot of books, as they're doing volume, it made sense for her to do a print run and have it in a warehouse. But if you're selling enough of certain things and there's not a huge volume, print on demand can be ideal. But for her, she just, de just increased her profit uh, largely by getting the books print to 10,000 um, book print run and getting the cost down, so it beats POD. But, um, but again, it's where you're at in your business volume. I use POD for, my, um, for a lot of my merchandising, um, and I'm even considering Book Vault because um, I'm building a few different projects. I'm always testing and using Book Vault in that sense, but I love Book Vault. Alex like Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, answer the question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, hello, great presentation. Thank you. Yeah, um, my, one of the things I'm most excited about that you talked about was that now by selling direct, you can learn about your visitors and optimize and make changes. Can you provide uh, an example of when you have done that for an author for your books and just for people who? don't necessarily know what optimization in general means, okay, like a real-world so example. I actually might have something. So optimization is when you get on Shopify, your shop will not look like this. So optimization is making changes that are going to be more useful or drive more conversion. So the reason the button is green there, it's not because I like it green, it's because when I was in Shopify Plus, they gave us the exact button that work all across stores. So it wasn't just me. I have some concept where I, I like getting down to the data, but I try to keep it as simple as possible because most people are not going to be like really data geeks and driven. But optimization, I realized by me changing the button there, it actually drove more conversion. 
So you will see here, I'm not sure how big it is, it says order within 15 hours, 46 seconds, okay, by, I guess by November 1st. It's simply we realize if we kind of have like Amazon, we kind of give them some kind of, hey, here's a date that your book will get there, it helps. I, what I do is I put things and then take them off and look at the data just to see how they react to it. One big thing a lot of authors use is pop-ups. And for a while, I had no pop-ups on mine. I, one, I was collecting a lot of people who weren't necessarily buying. And I don't like anyone who gets in my email list for free. <laughs> so it was like, OK, you didn't buy, and I'm sending you a discount code. You're not acting on there. And also through, I use an app named Lucky Orange. I think I watch a presentation where they mention it. I watch what people are doing on the website. And I would realize that the pop-up was getting in people's way. They're trying to read the description, and here's a pop-up. So although many people recommended it, I took it off. Now I'm testing it. I have one minute. So, so now I'm testing. That's optimization. <laughs> OK, so okay. no problem. One minute. We could. Hi, pardon the entry level question. How are you generating reviews? Um, the main thing is that now, every time someone makes a purchase, they get to your email list, you can get to communicate with them personally. So um, these reviews are just reviews I have on Shopify. I didn't pull them from, from um, Amazon. I don't necessarily recommend that. It takes, but you can. Um, but this is just we send them email and, and communicate with them. And interesting, it has, this book has over 20,000 reviews but on Amazon. But yes, 30 seconds, I promise. And if you don't get to answer your question, I'm, I'll be here after that. OK, Hopefully. well, this is probably pretty specific. Um, what about a person who has, I have like a series that's going to be very, very long. I plan to like maybe 100 books. What's the best method, like individually, that seems like? Per series. Per so series. I've been telling people, someone else asked me this, and I'm like, if you start for one series, you will beat the overwhelm. What most people are trying to do is upload everything and then find and fix it. No, work with the first series that you think you're going to be marketing and going to be ideal, and then um, you know, like get that done and then go to it. Like as a bundle or no? Because you kind of you can bundle it up, but if you if you say let's say you have a series of, of ten books and you have all you upload all ten books, eventually, once you have all of them in the store, you can then bundle them. But now you don't have to put a hundred books. You're just focusing on getting your store with at least these ten books, and then later on you keep adding more and more at your own pace. But our time is up, and I no no you can come here. I'll take off the mic and we get to talk. But thank you. And the best of luck. And join me at 2.30 if you want to know a little bit more. Thank you.